What's up, YouTube? So the purpose of this video, before we get into it, uh, I just want to give you an update on my theater. I have another video that I posted if you want to, you know, get a sense for the gear and everything I have. I have a essentially a 5.1 or 2.4. So I got bed layer 5 and then 4 Atmos and a couple of subs. But um, the purpose of this video, I basically wanted to give you a quick update. And I wanted to just, you know, I got a lot from the YouTube community. And I just wanted to you know, give back and show how I did my theater. And so you can watch the other video that gives you a full outline of the theater. But um, the one thing that I specifically want to cover in this video is the update that I made with respect to the TV. Because I do have a projector and you can see the screen there. But I added a TV and it was specifically for gaming. But also because I wanted to be able to play, you know, 4K discs for the Atmos content. But also be able to watch 3D movies with my 3D projector. And you can't get that uh, normally because 4K discs don't generally have, you know, 3D playback as far as video. And 3D discs, 3D Blu-ray typically don't have Atmos. And so I got this great idea from someone else. And I'll post his name in um, as a kind of text over over the video or maybe in the, you know, below the uh, in the comments below the video. But I saw this guy's video on YouTube and I want to give him credit. I finally found his video again. And it was just an awesome idea to be able to watch 3D as well as have 4K Atmos. And the way he did it is kind of what I, you know, I stole his idea. And, and it, I, I at least want to give him credit, but it's awesome. So we have a great YouTube community and I feel like that's how you learn in um, home theater. You kind of learn from how other people did it. So I just want to give back and show at least my example. And maybe it can be an inspiration for others. And, you know, they may want to follow the same thing. So with that said, I'll play the video now. Thanks. Hey everybody. All right, Chris here. I want to give you an update on my home theater. I, I had posted another video maybe two months ago showing you the main updates of the theater. You know, I, I initially started the theater in 2014 and I made some updates in 2020, 2021, added some speakers, things like that. But I want to give you a little update because I did make some pretty awesome improvements. And so the first one is, you know, I added this TV. If, if you notice in the old video, this wasn't here. It's a 65 inch QLED. And there are a number of reasons why I went with QLED. I'll get into it in 65 inch because I could have gone bigger, could have gone OLED. But, you know, I, I went with this for a number of reasons and I'll talk about it. I also added a PlayStation 5, which is awesome. So um, now I can do my gaming on the TV. But before I get into it, the number one reason why I got a TV, okay, is to be able to watch 3D uh, Blu-ray movies, but have 4K audio. And let me explain. There's this guy, I wish I could find him on YouTube, and I wish I could credit him for, for teaching me how to do it. Um, but in his video, what he did was he had a projector screen, and the projector would play 3D on the projector screen, but the TV would handle the video from the 4K disc. And so what I mean is, everybody knows that most 4K discs don't have uh, 3D playback, and 3D Blu-rays don't have Dolby Atmos. So what this guy did on YouTube was, is he has two Blu-ray players, one that supports uh, 4K and the other that supports Blu-ray. And he would buy the same movie twice, one with the 4K disc, then one with, uh, with Atmos, and then one with the, with the Blu-ray video. And he would put the 3D disc into the 3D Blu-ray player, put the 4K Atmos disc into the 4K player, and then he'd split the signal. So he would play the 3D disc to his projector, which is 3D compatible, he would play the 4K disc to his TV and his speaker set. So he would get the, the 4K Atmos, okay? But the video would be 3D Blu-ray coming from his projector. And I was like, man, I gotta do that. Uh, so the TV is the newest addition to my home. I already had the projector. And so what you can see here is, <laughs> I do have two Blu-ray players, one's older, one's a 4K player that I recently updated. So I was like, I can do this. I went out and bought the TV, um, and now I can just split the video. I can uh, run both discs at the same time, the, the 3D and the 4K with the Atmos. So I get the uh, the 3D on the screen, and then I hear the Atmos coming from the other player that's also coming from the receiver. So the receiver and the 4K player handle all the Atmos, and then the projector and the 
3D Blu-ray uh, player, they handle the video. And I keep the, the uh, audio from the projector off. That way I don't hear the sound twice. So it works out for me and I can, I'll post a picture of the, the, uh, the fact that I can play the, the projector uh, while the TV is still on. So that's how, how it works for me and this just blocks the TV. I have no light coming from, through the screen. So that, that, that's the main reason why I did this update. But the other thing that I did was, um, as I mentioned, I got the PlayStation 5. That can run to the TV. Again, it's a, a QLED TV. It handles 4K, 120 uh, hertz, I think, 120 frames per second, sorry. 120 frames per second, so I get that. Um, so it's pretty awesome. Uh, as far as the reason why I got a QLED as opposed to OLED, number one, from based on my research and the TVs that are available to me, I could have I could have paid you know a couple hundred dollars, maybe a thousand dollars more, gotten the OLED, but I needed it. The biggest thing was I needed the TV to fit behind the screen. Now I don't have a lot of space between the screen and the wall, and there's no way I'm moving the screen again. So uh, so. I had about two inches of clearance between the wall and the screen. And so I was looking at OLEDs, QLEDs, and I was like, uh, QLEDs seem to be about an inch thick. OLEDs, they were a little thick for me. So a one inch thick QLED seemed to work. So I went with the Samsung. I got a one inch thick um, TV uh, wall mount. So the one inch from the wall mount plus the one inch from the TV, and I guess you know, it was about a half, in, a half inch extra. So it, it unfortunately it does create a slight bulge in the screen, but it's nothing noticeable when watching movies. I don't notice it. I've had you know guests come over and they don't notice it. So it seems to work out. And again, you don't see the image or the light from the TV behind the screen because this screen has a, a black backing. So that's what happened for me. Um, so I mean, it works out. As far as you know, you sit up here. You know, I only watch, play video games on the TV. I watch movies or, you know, like Stranger Things. I watch it on the big screen. Otherwise, regular TV, I watch downstairs. You know, this is for weekend sort of usage. Downstairs is for my regular use. And, um, yeah, I've got a 5.0.2 downstairs. 5.0.2 system. So I got bed layer and then two Atmos at the front. <clears throat> but as far as up here, I haven't made any updates to my speakers, but I will tell you, uh, if you watch my old video, so I've got 5. Point, I guess 1 or 5.2.4. So I've got two subs, four Atmos, and I've got two bass shakers in my chair. And I gotta tell you, the bass shakers in the chair, you know, when I was watching movies, I was like, man, this is pretty awesome. You know, when you watch scenes with explosions or watch Stranger Things with all those deep basses, you know, like when they're in the upside down and you hear the, the, the big deep voice of Vecna or things like that. It's pretty awesome. You know, you feel everything. But when you play video games, oh my God. It's like, uh, I play Horizon Forbidden West and that game is awesome. When, you, when you're playing with these monster machines that are gigantic titans or whatnot, and they're stomping all over the place, you really feel it uh, in the chair. It's like a full body um, rubble pack. It's so awesome. It's so immersive. And especially with the surround sound, you know, you hear everything around you, you feel it in, in your body. I gotta tell you, being able to watch 3D and listen to 4K, it's awesome. I mean, you're talking movies like, I got uh, I got Dread in 4K and 3D. I got uh, Edge of Tomorrow 4K and 3D. All the, all the Pixar movies in 3D and 4K. It's, it's pretty awesome. You know, you get total immersion. So, but, um, but anyways, th thanks for watching the video again. If you have any comments, suggestions, tips, questions, definitely put them in the comments, but uh, thanks for watching. Hey, so two things I forgot to mention. Number one, the size of the TV, I could have gone with like a 75 inch or 85 inch. Again, this is a 65 inch, and I would have loved to have gone with a larger size, but the one thing I was thinking about is, if I ever have a problem with the TV, you know, God forbid I gotta take it into a store to get serviced, 65 inch is gonna be a lot more manageable than a 75 inch or 85 inch. So that's why I went with the 65 inch. Um, for my, my big screen movies, I just throw them on the projector anyways. For gaming, 65 inch gets the job done. So 
that's why I went with the 65 inch. I mean, believe me, I would have loved to have gotten the 85 inch, but it wasn't practical for me. That was my biggest concern. And then the other thing I want to mention with the bass shakers, those things are awesome because uh, remember, they don't produce uh, sound waves. They don't produce bass waves. So I, I live in a condo. And so those bass waves, they don't travel through the walls and bother my neighbors. So it works out perfectly for me. I can keep my subs on a pretty low volume, pretty low dB output, and then feel everything through the bass shakers. And um, I've got you know vibration pads underneath the chair to kind of absorb some of that vibration. That way it doesn't bother, you know, that it doesn't shake the walls or anything. Unfortunately, those bass shakers are so strong, they do shake my room. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. They literally shake the room, I can hear it. But they don't disturb my neighbors, and that's the most important thing. So um, well, those are the two things I wanted to add. So again, if you have any questions, please let me know. Add them in the comments section. Thanks.